In this last lecture on business and society and how they interact, we'll talk about financial management within an enterprise and how the securities markets, the markets for stocks and bonds and how they're purchased and sold, um, how, they're, uh, how that interacts with business in order to create the opportunities for organizations to understand and manage their risks in unique and beneficial ways to all parties involved. We'll talk about those, those elements in a, starting with the current short-term situation, and we'll talk about the long-term situation, and we'll proceed into talking about how one makes decisions about the future and takes advantage of the securities markets. Uh, that is the markets for uh, live, for uh, for debt and for equity financing in order to uh, manage the future and try to eliminate or mitigate or at least get the make the best decisions in the context of the risk that's out there from an economic and political perspective. So let's start by talking about financial management in the short term, which means the day-to-day -day operations of financial management making sure that the company has the, or the organization, the enterprise has the assets that it needs in order to perform its daily operations. Uh, Short-term management is called working capital management, making sure that there's enough cash in the cash registers, enough cash in the banks to pay all the debts that are due, all the bills that come due, um, and also to manage uh, effectively all those assets that you have in ways that you don't you don't over, you don't lose value by having them sitting idle. Um, Short-term assets and liabilities are things like inventory and accounts receivable. Uh, those are the assets, the, the uh, liabilities or debts that are due, perhaps the payables that are due, your rent, all those kinds of things. Um, you manage all of those assets in a way that maximizes the value and makes your money work efficiently in the same way that you want individually to work efficiency efficiently working on the right things at the right time you also want your capital to work efficiently on the right things at the right time and that is working capital management in the short term for example you manage transaction balances making sure cash balances are are um, of, of various accounts held by the firm or you clearly understand what's in there. You don't go to negative balances where there might be fees or fines, making sure that you can pay all the bills by having enough, uh, enough uh, capital or cash available through various lines of credit and the like. Um, Lockbox is something that organizations tend to have for them, um, have a, a, that banks use so that they can process incoming payments and get them immediately into their accounts so that they're, use, they're of use to them, rather than get a paper check, immediately transfer them into a lockbox or the, the, the bank takes care of it and puts it into the appropriate accounts, it's usually a commercial bank. Um, these are some of the things that you use. If one has excess cash, um, say you're, um, you're closing for the weekend, you had a good week, whatever, you have a couple of tens or fifteen thousand dollars that have have gathered in your various accounts, you don't necessarily want them to sit idle, you can invest them in what's called marketable securities for a period of time until you need them. They last for a while, you know, extra cash, you can earn some returns, interest or equity returns on them. Again, manage them carefully, buy security bills, other kinds of, of bonds and the like. Um, these are short term, relatively short term, 30 days, whatever, so that you can make sure your cash is working for you. U.S. Treasury bills, are generally considered risk-free. The rate of those is considered the return, the real return and the, the return that you would get for cash that has no risk. It doesn't lose value because it, does, it, it has inflation in the return and in addition it keeps up with the pricing in the overall system um, and the growth of the system. So a T-bill is considered a risk-free asset. So typically money in a large organization, the Cash balances are shuffled off to banks overnight, and um, the excess cash is invested in these kinds of securities to get a little bit of return to add to your um, to your total total revenue. These are some of the the things that are offered. These uh, your treasury bills, 90 day bills. You have the uh, treasury bills that are 180 day bills. If they get to be longer. They're called bonds. You have commercial paper, which is 30 days usually major corporations loan to one another in the same way. 
my company has excess cash, another company needs some cash to make some pay payroll, one company leads to another lends to another, that's commercial paper, certificates of deposit, banks offer those, those are CDs, 90 days, 180 days, whatever. Um, European banks trade in dollars also, and a thing called Euro dollars, um, lending money back and forth. By keeping the capital working, it doesn't sit idle, and so therefore it return and it earns some returns for you. Even though it's not necessarily running your business, it is still available. These are short-term uh, marketable securities, so it remains available for you as you go forward. Diving in a little bit further in some of these, um, commercial certificates of deposits or companies go to a bank, they give them some of their money. Um, usually they have minimums, minimum of $100,000, because um, there's this cost associated with it for the bank, but you give them the $100,000 and then over a period of time, you get money back with a with some interest associated with it. Um, again, commercial paper is the same way. One company to another for a specific amount of money. Um, Euro dollar is a similar kind of a, of a process. So your that's just your cash account to make sure it doesn't sit idle. The excess cash doesn't sit idle. You make use of it. You also have the opportunity to manage other current assets like your your receivables. This is when you give somebody a service and you send them a bill and then they have to pay. Uh, there's a time lag associated with that. You want to try to minimize that. So um, that's managing your receivables to try to maximize their value. When people don't pay their bills, uh, you have to send out creditors. There's costs associated with that. So the idea is to try to use receivables to increase the buying power of your customers and the likelihood that they'll close the business but at the same time to maximize that value so it comes in as close as possible to a cash account. Um, credit ratings and the threat of some people losing their credit rating by not paying their bills is one of those things that you use sort of to help you get those bills paid. But the whole idea is you create your, you facilitate your business by allowing people to purchase on credit, but then you try to collect those as, as fast as possible and maximize your receivables. In terms of inventory, same kind of story. Here you're getting things put on your shelves. Sometimes you're the one borrowing from from customer or from a supplier to, to stock your shelves. They bring in a truck and you, you unload it or whatever, um, a truck in a metaphorical sense, and uh, then they send you a bill or they leave you the invoice and you have to pay it. Well, that's payables. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But in terms of assets, you now have that inventory. The ideal situation is to sell it, to get rid of it, get get cash money for it before you even have to pay the bill right that's optimizing your inventory so you're taking advantage of the fact that you have the inventory and getting it out the door as fast as you can that's why what you buy where you place it all those things become so important for optimizing the inventory that you have accounts payable is trade credit that's what i just mentioned oftentimes they'll drop things off and leave you a bill then you send them some money um, there are other kinds of uh, short-term liabilities, you know, like having to pay your rent or whatever, and when that is due. Um, sometimes there's discounts offered if you pay early, like a tenth, uh, a tenth off if you pay in 30 days, um, which is a, a one percent discount. Um, that kind of thing. If you pay early, it's these kinds of ways. If you if you don't need the capital, then it might be a better deal to get take that one percent. That's better than keeping the cash and investing in marketable securities. So you manage all of these numbers, and when you're on when you're operating on a large scale, it can mean a lot of money. Um, other kinds of current liabilities include a line of credit, which simply means that if you need to spend money, you can draw on your line of credit. If you don't have quite enough money to make payroll one day, you have a line of credit so that you could pay payroll, and then you're essentially borrowing the money to pay payroll, hopefully paying it back soon. Secured loans are when you have a piece of equipment or something like that that you, you give collateral to the bank so that if you don't pay it, the bank knows it can come in and get, get some or most of the value back. An unsecured loan is generally at a higher interest rate, um, but you have a good reputation for paying your bills, so you get a loan just by virtue of your reputation. And a last term to kind of know about is prime rate, which is a number that's quoted, which you don't always get which is the number that is the rate that they pay or that they, um, they lend money to their top customers, their most uh, credit-worthy customers is generally called the prime rate. 
Um, also, you should know that there's a thing called factoring, which means if you have receivables, that is people owe you money, um, but um, you're unable necessarily to correct them quickly, a factor will sometimes come in um, and purchase your receivables or some other asset that you have at a discount, often a rather deep discount, so that you can get cash. So you can sell off your receivables and get perhaps uh, uh, not eighty percent of their value. If you have a hundred, if you have a thousand dollars in receivables, you may be able to get um, something like eight hundred dollars right, right up cash money, and then the receivables are theirs, and they get to go collect them. Um, this, it's just a way to get money quickly if one needs to manage your current liabilities. Um, sometimes you have to pay uh, immediately when they come due, and so there's a crisis where you have to get capital, and um, you don't have time to manage or maximize your receivables. So there's factors, is this uh, business business model out there that allows you to satisfy that short-term cash requirement. The summary of that is that over the short term, there are things that are, that when you pay close attention to them, you could incrementally allow your money to work better for you, more efficiently for you, and increase your rate of return, maybe by a percent or two overall, just by good financial management in the short term. And that maybe doesn't sound like much, but on a large scale, it can amount to a lot. If you have millions of dollars working for you, 1% can be quite a bit. Right? $100 million, that's a million. If you're running $100 million, 1% is an extra million dollars that you earn in profit. Also, we have to worry about return on the longer term. So let's now dive in a little bit to financial management. On the longer term, 